Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I'm just going to go over, I have a couple um, dehydrated males I'm working on, but, um, or not, well yeah, dehydrated males, kind of. um, but I did this uh, probably a couple months ago, and it worked out pretty well. Um, you just take a pound of hamburger, and you brown it pretty good, um, you want to get it pretty good and done, uh, but you also want to get a lot of the fat out of it, because it won't keep very well if you don't get a lot of the fat out of it. So I'm going to cook this real good, and I'll probably strain it a couple times to get a good amount of the fat out, and uh, I'll be back with you and show you the next step of the process. Alright guys, what I've done right now is I'm putting a little bit of water in there. I just put a little bit more in there. But uh, what that's going to do is it's going to mix with any other fat that's going to come out of that, um, the meat. And it's going to mix with it and give me a better chance of getting you know, a lot of the grease out. So I'm going to drain it and then I'll get back with you in about two or three minutes after it's done simmering, gets a little mixed, and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so I have got my meat that's strained, and all I've got is a uh, regular oven pan with a couple layers of uh, paper towel. Now paper towel is going to soak up any residual um, water or fat in the uh, in the meat. I'll just pour it out and then kind of spread it. It's still a little hot, but I'll spread it out a little bit with my hand and then I'll wait a few minutes till it's nice and well cool enough to where I can handle it with my hands. I'll go through it and I'll break it up real fine. Or it's pretty you know, pretty good. Um, just use your own discretion. I mean it's got a few minutes till it can be handled, but uh I'll go through and then I'll handle it and break it up, spread it out a little more, and I'll be back with the next step. So I got my meat. It broke out on this tray. And I have my oven. I started it out pretty warm. Um, I'm going to put it up. I'll, I'm going to switch the, uh, I'm going to switch in about an hour. I'm going to put it up on the top. Um, here in about a half hour, I'm going to take it out, let it sit for about five minutes, and I'm going to go back through and I'm going to go back through with my hands and I'm going to crumple it back, crumple it up even, even more. Um, I have my oven set on about 200, 210. You don't want to go too high because you don't want to burn it. You want to do this slow. You know, the slower the better, kind of. Um, so I'm going to actually put it on about 200. about 200 and then I'm going to close it but I'm going to prop it open probably about I got this little thing I used last time it worked pretty good um, I'm going to prop it open probably about I don't know an inch or so yeah just so there's about an inch showing out through there that'll let all the moisture evaporate but um I'll be back with you and show you halfway through. Alright guys, I took this out and I mixed it around. You can probably see that some of it's looking a little dry, some of it's looking a little wet. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes, let it cool off a bit, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to work it with my hands a little bit more. And I'll probably do this process two or three more times. So. Uh, I'd say this might take about two and a half hours to check it every 30 minutes, see how it's doing. But uh, some of you guys' uh, 
ovens might be a little different. So I'll get back with you when it's pretty close to done. Burger is done and ready to cool off and just hang out for a little bit and then I will put it in a bag. Alright, so what I did was let it cool off for a little while and then I messed around with it with my hands a little bit and also I forgot to mention make sure before you mess with this each time that you wash your hands and make sure your hands are clean uh, throughout the whole process because you don't want any bacteria um, any excess bacteria getting into the food and into the freezer bag or the vacuum bag um, that way the bacteria doesn't grow inside the bag and then you get sick when you eat it the next time and uh, just as a precaution just wash your hands and be careful and keep everything as clean as you can so um, I got everything, I got this bag I'm going to put it in the bag, I'm going to close it up and then I'm going to mess around with it and you know crunch it around and get it uh, all broke up pretty good that way uh, when I do vacuum seal it it doesn't have real jagged edges and it's not going to poke through the bag and create a leak. Okay, so this is what I'm basically putting together. This is the meat that I just dehydrated and the brown right here is meat I had already dehydrated. There's half of it. There's the other half of it. This is a uh, box of Mexican rice, I, I believe, but they're both the same. Box of Mexican rice, a half a pound of burger. These are two meals. I could probably feed two people each one of these. Um, and I'm gonna put split these up the same way, or this up the same way as those with macaroni I'm not sure if I'm gonna put a whole thing of macaroni per just like this but I am adding taco season taco season is added into those along with um, dehydrated onions that I had already had that I figured would come in handy and I also put um, some real bacos uh, real you know, real bacos in the, this meat not this one, this is just regular meat. I might put some onion in it. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. This is the bag I'm putting it in. It's a little, uh, just a little, like, lunchbox type thing. But I'm putting about six meals, or six vacuum pack packages in there as just a uh, emergency grab bag. And I might have enough room to stuff some denatured alcohol and a, an alcohol stove in there so uh yeah I'm just dehydrating getting a little bit prepared and uh hope you guys learned a little something and uh, you guys take care have a good one